the HR business partner. The HR business partner has been with us somewhere in the region of nearly 20 years now. We talk about the fact that, and sorry because it's warming up and it's going to be a roller coaster, I'm taking my jacket off. Please don't worry, not more than the jacket is coming off. So, five years, the world has changed. Business partner has been here for nearly 20 years. It has changed beyond all recognition. What customers want, what's happening in the markets what employees want, what stakeholders want, the involvement of wider society through social media in terms of assessing and benchmarking organisations in terms of performance and ethics. So the HR business partner is under what I call time pressure. And also we have an increasingly uncertain future about what's happening in our organisations. Bottom line, HR has to stay relevant or it becomes irrelevant. And that's my challenge, I think, in terms of looking at what I've looked at to work out how we can stay relevant in that world. Now, I work with organisations to try and help that happen. But what is, I think, important for me to say at this point is that you are sort of 20 to 25 percent of the people I talk to, audiences I speak to, audiences I work with. The other 75 to 80 percent is line managers, CEOs, last week 50 finance directors. So all the time I'm getting feedback from people about what they think of HR. How's it doing? Where's it great? Where's it not so great? In different organisations and different sectors. So what I do is I sort of ask those questions. So when I come and speak to a great HR audience, I then have answers from real people in real situations. You in the room probably get what I'm going to say. Otherwise you wouldn't be in this room. The simple point is that that is not good enough. You, ladies and gentlemen, may well be islands of excellence in a sea of mediocrity, but that's not going to make your organisation successful. It might make you feel good. You can put your hand up in the next board meeting and say, I am an island of excellence and you are the sea. No, you better not do that, but still. So let's move swiftly on. I think it's about relevance, resonance, results and ROI. And for those of you that were here last year and heard me speak, it's about making HR sexy too. HR business partner. We seem to think that this is an end destination. It's not. It's just a step on that journey, the journey to success. I think the HR entrepreneur is the next one. It's a different approach, as Lucy was saying earlier. It's delivering success, not HR. And I think there's a difference. What's my journey been? Because I think that also gives you an insight into why I'm saying the completely mad things I'm saying. One, economist. Two, trained accountant. Three, got bored with that and joined the British Army. Okay, it's a stupid career path, I admit it, but it was fun. British Army, for those of you that don't know, the military cascade decision-making responsibility right down to the bottom, because that's the only way things can happen in the things they get involved in. Working with entrepreneurs and SMEs for eight years, truly understanding what entrepreneurs and SMEs are about. Moving into the public sector, highly unionised, into UBS and major banks. Global Head of Leadership at UBS in a major transition that's now a Harvard case study, really being put under pressure by the business to deliver. Because as those of you in financial services know, particularly investment banking, if you're HR and you do not deliver on time, you're dead. They'll find someone else who'll do it, outside, and they won't tell you. <laughs> I'm not joking, one of those institutions we discovered that 30%, 30 to 40 percent of the coaching going on in the organisation, HR knew nothing about. Because line management said, they've taken too long, they've taken more than a week to reply, go and find somebody, we'll put it under our admin budget. Two weeks at Michigan with someone called Dave Ulrich. You've heard of a guy called Dave Ulrich? Looking truly at what the HR business partner is about. First two days, we did not discuss HR. We just talked about brand, end customer, etc. UK National Health Service, where what HR delivers is important. Hospitals with poor leadership have higher mortality rates than those with good leadership. 
think about that. HR helps people save lives. <coughs> did some work around the world with various organizations Chinese based program Myanmar Red Cross wrote a book on strategic leadership looking at what strategic leaders need to do I'm told I'm not sure if it's true the first ever book purely focused on strategic leadership development but to understand that you need to understand what strategic leaders have to do to understand what strategic leaders have to do you have to understand therefore you can take from that what HR needs to do to enable them to be great and I'm pulling all of that together to get where we are now. Has anyone seen this model? Okay, let's rationalise it very, very quickly. Here we go. Those areas where we try and deliver what we need to deliver rely on us understanding in depth what's going on. Not just in HR, but in the big picture. Not only that, but then there's also the challenge if we take this part, pretty much 50% or more of that is about future thinking. So even to be a good business partner, we need to understand the holistic picture and we need to understand where we may be going, not just getting caught in the weeds of doing HR operational work.